Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to present to you the findings from my second PhD study, looking at the sex differences in adaptation to short and long-term isothermic heat acclimation. So there's limited literature looking at um, a gender or a sex comparison in adaptation to heat acclimation, such that females are currently adopting protocols based on data derived from uh, male participants. This study by Avellini and colleagues, conducted in 1980, assessed males and females' responses to 10 days fixed intensity heat acclimation. This graph represents rectal temperature data during a heat stress test performed pre and post acclimation. And what we can see is for male participants, there's a significant reduction in rectal temperature at both 60 and 90 minutes. And for female participants, there's a significant reduction at 90 minutes. Uh, although, interestingly, pre-acclimation, males had a significantly greater rectal temperature compared with uh, female participants, and following acclimation, uh, the results were similar. These findings suggest that uh, males established greater reductions in thermoregulatory strain uh, following 10 days heat acclimation compared with females. However, these results uh, should be viewed with caution as the fixed intensity protocol adopted in this particular study may have constrained the adaptation in the female participants. And also, more commonly, uh, athletes are adopting a short-term acclimation protocol, um, and this particular study provides no data on short-term responses. So more recently, a study conducted by Gagnon and Kenny um, observed the um, male and female's responses to an acute exercise heat exposure. This particular uh, graph here looks at <coughs> evaporative heat loss uh, during... <laughs> Sorry, thank you. <laughs> um, during 90 minutes uh, exercise at a fixed heat production. And these results demonstrate that males and females have a similar onset... Um, however, there's uh, significant differences in the latter end of the exercise um, in their thermosensitivity, with males having a significantly higher thermosensitivity compared with females. Therefore, these findings show that when heat production is matched, ma males and females differ in their heat loss capacity with redu reduced pseudomotor thermosensitivity in females. With these known differences in males and females' responses, to an acute exercise heat exposure, you may anticipate that there are differences in their adaptive capacity to heat acclimation. So the aim of this study was to compare male and female's responses, thermoregulatory and physiological adaptation to short-term and long-term isothermic heat acclimation. And we hypothesize that there may be differences in males and females temporal patterning to isothermic heat acclimation. So the study, uh, we conducted eight males and eight females for this study, and the participants were exposed to 10 days isothermic heat acclimation. Each session involved 90 minutes, whereby participants were cycling at 65% of their VO2 peak until the target core temperature of 38.5 was achieved. At this point, the exercise intensity was altered to maintain that core temperature. Before acclimation, following five days acclimation and also following 10 days heat acclimation, a heat stress test was performed. This involved running for 30 minutes at 9 kilometers an hour, 2% um, elevation, in ambient conditions of 40 degrees Celsius and 40% relative humidity. So moving on to some of the findings, the data presented here in this presentation will be the responses during the three heat stress tests performed pre-acclimation, following five days acclimation, and also following 10 days acclimation, with males' responses being in the black columns and females' responses being in the white columns. And what we can see here is following five days acclimation, there's a significant reduction in the male's peak core temperature. However, there are no significant changes in females' responses. Following 10 days heat acclimation, we see a significant reduction in females' responses, although no further changes in males' responses, although this is, remains significant compared to the first heat stress test. What we can also see is um, there are no significant changes in resting core temperature as a result of heat acclimation in both males and females, although, as you would anticipate, the uh, core temperature change follows a similar trend to the peak core temperature data with a significant reduction in female... Uh, 
in male participants and um, a significant reduction following 10 days heat acclimation in both males and females. So moving on to um, heart rate data, what we can see here is there are no significant reductions in both males and females uh, in peak heart rate as a result of both five days and 10 days heat acclimation. Although following short-term heat acclimation, there is a 12 beats per minute reduction in males' heart rate, although only a four beats per minute reduction in females. And following long-term heat acclimation, there are no further reductions in males' peak heart rate, although there's a, an additional three beats per minute for the female participants. Again, there was no significant reductions in heart rate rest, although the data certainly shows a trend for a decline in resting heart rate. And again, the mean heart rate data during the heat stress test shows a similar trend to the rectal temperature data with a significant reduction following five days in the male participants and no further changes apparent following 10 days in the males, although it is significant to the first heat stress test and significant reductions in females following 10 days heat acclimation. So the physiological strain index, which is a combined measure of the cardiovascular and thermoregulatory strain, taking into account baseline measures. What we can see here is following five days acclimation, there's a 20% significant reduction in males' physiological strain index, although there are no changes in females' responses. Although following 10 days heat acclimation, there's no further changes in males' responses, although there is a 16% reduction in the PSI compared to the first heat stress test. Therefore, these results suggest that females may require long-term isothermic heat acclimation to establish thermoregulatory stability. So moving on to sweat rate data, what we interestingly see here is following five days acclimation, females have had a 131% increase in their sweat rate, although there were no changes for the male participants. Although following long-term heat acclimation, there's a 35% increase in males sweat rate, and then a slight additional increase in females. So an increase in sweat rate was established following short-term heat acclimation in females. However, long-term heat acclimation was required for the male participants. So interestingly, we have an increase in sweat rate following five days heat acclimation in the female participants, although there were no significant changes in the physiological strain suggesting that even though the sweat rate has improved, the evaporative heat loss capacity has not changed. And then in the male participants, we see no significant changes in their sweat rate, although a 20% reduction in their physiological strain. And this may be due to alterations in the onset threshold for the pseudomotor function or adaptation to other heat loss mechanisms. Although due to the simplicity of the measures within this particular study, I can't really draw conclusions on that. And then, so this is the first study to compare males and females' physiological responses to isothermic heat acclimation. And these findings suggest that there are sex differences in the temporal patterning in adaptation to isothermic heat acclimation, and that females may require long-term heat acclimation to establish thermoregulatory and cardiovascular stability. And therefore, the heat acclimation protocols that we use with our athletes should be designed to target sex differences in their thermoregulation to ensure optimal adaptation. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Aspatar for providing me with the travel grant to attend this conference today, and also to my co-workers, Professor Joe Doust, Dr. Neil Maxwell, and Ollie Gibson from the Exercise and Extreme Environments Research Group at the University of Brighton. Thank you. Thank you for saying nicely in the time frame. Are there any questions? Not nice presentation. I just had a question about your protocol. So you said you had them exercise for 90 minutes, and once they achieved this rectal temp of 38.5. So just curious, to, um, the, the whole time was 90 minutes? In other words, regardless of when they achieved the 38.5. And so just curious, on average, kind of how quickly did that occur? At what point did most people reach the 38.5 within that 90-minute period, and then kind of how long were they at that temperature? There's, I've possibly got... Um, 
some of the training data here. So the duration of exercise range for the participants, but you can see here 64 minutes for the males, 57 at the start. So they were exercising for this one's on. <laughs> they were exercising for majority of the session with maybe 20 minutes rest, up to 30 minutes rest. Although the duration varied for p participants, with some people reaching target core temperature after 25 minutes, some people taking almost the full 90 minutes to achieve it, depending on the day and how fatigue the participant was and whether they could maintain the exercise intensity we proposed. What well and Jessica, great talk. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a couple of questions. I think you potentially have a very interesting finding because um, maximum skin wetness in unacclimatized individuals is typically assumed to be 85% of the theoretical maximum. And we assume that with heat acclimatization, that that can be elevated to a maximum skin wetness of one. However, what Dan showed in his paper in 2011 is that even when they're unacclimatized, the maximum skin wetness for females seems to be lower. Mm -hmm. And perhaps what you're seeing is that even following acclimatization, that sex difference still exists. So we shouldn't be using the same theoretical maximum skin wetness for females following acclimation as we do for males. So from a, from a, from a modeling and a, and a risk prediction point of view, I think you have something potentially very interesting there. Um, that's just, I guess that's not a question, it's a comment, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the question is, because the way in which you acclimatize them uh, was based on maintaining a fixed Core, absolute core temperature. Um, I, I guess my question is: Is was the was the volume of, of 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 exercise, and therefore the amount of strain on the sweating system, was it different between males and females? Because your females were less fit, mm -hmm. and you were at, and you were getting them to exercise at a fixed relative exercise intensity. Is that right? To the right. Yeah, yeah. So that the the evaporative requirements would be lower in the females. Mm -hmm. So I wonder whether the actual stress that was imposed on the pseudomotor apparatus might have been maybe a, a little lower in the females, and maybe that's m maybe one reason why you might see the differences that you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's certainly an interesting question. It'd be interesting to measure that during the acclimation sessions and provide a little bit more data to yeah, understand what's happening here. Maybe a good idea would be to figure out what the absolute workload was, oh, absolute metabolic rate was, and you can figure yeah. out what the mm -hmm. evaporative requirements were in each one just as a way of kind of contextualizing your data. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you.